What's up Hoopers, it's Coach Alex from Think Pro Basketball and in today's video we are going to go over how to play defense against a post player. Let's get started. Alright guys, well like I said we're going to break down how to play defense in the post against a post player. We're going to talk about it three different ways. Alright, so let's get right into it. I'm going to put this ball out here because this is where the pass is coming from. So we're focused right here, down here. It's me and Buddy, right? Buddy is on offense, I'm on defense, I'm guarding him. The first thing that you could do is play behind the defender or the offensive player, right? So you're not in front, you're not on the side, you're directly behind. If you're playing directly behind a player inside the post, that means like you feel like your defense is better than their offense, right? Because you're basically allowing them to get an easy catch and allowing them to go to whatever move they want, right? Because if you're behind them, now you're in a position where as they start to back you down, you want to keep contact with them, right? You don't want to be all chest to chest on them or put your body on them too close. Number one, you could get called for a foul. Number two, they can use your weight against you, right? They can spin off of you. When you're playing in the post, you want to have a little bit of a gap. I'm not saying you have to be this far off of a post player, but you don't want to be up too close. You want to be about in this position here where you can keep contact with a forearm or a hand, right, just to feel them out. You can't control them with your hand, but to just touch back and forth to let them know that you're here and to give yourself the appropriate distance you need in order to guard them effectively inside the post, right? So once, you, once they catch it and the ball's in here, now you're in a position where as if you were on the perimeter. You gotta break down in your stance, stay here and defend, right? You probably wanna force them away from their strong hand or force them wherever your coach is telling them. If, they, if your coach is telling you to force them baseline, then once they get it, you wanna get higher up on one side so they can only go one direction. All right, so when you're behind, now you've got to play them. You've got to figure out what they're going to do. This is probably the hardest way to defend a post player, but this is when you feel like you have the advantage as a defender to guard them efficiently and effectively. All right, so when you're behind, you control with your arm bar, with your hand, make sure you give enough distance where you can react to any move that they make inside the post. All right, so we've got two more ways to talk about, but that one right there is how to play behind the, def the offensive player in post defense. All right, guys, so we just talked about playing behind the offensive player with the behind technique. Now, this is one of the more common ways to guard the defense or offensive player is playing in a three-quarter front, right? Meaning you're three quarters on the defender. So you've got your hand in front denying them the pass. So if the ball's there, I'm denying them here. The only place that he can catch it now is they're gonna have to throw it out here. Now the offensive player is out of position and not where they want to be. So now, this is all up to your defensive scheme and how you guys play. If you're forcing towards the baseline, that means you're gonna be on top of this offensive player. So you're gonna have one foot on top and in front. You're gonna have one foot a little behind, almost even to their feet as well. And you've got your hand in front and you've got one hand on them. Right, so this hand here is allowing the resistance. So we don't want them to push us back here and get good position. We want to stick here. We want to be in a good stance. If we're standing straight up doing it, they're going to knock us around. But if we've got a strong base, we're here and we're in deny. Right, that's the position you're going to be in if you're forcing towards the baseline. If your team wants everything going towards the middle, you're going to be in the opposite side. Right, you're going to be on the baseline side, forcing it toward the middle. So if they can get a catch, it's going to be out in this area. Right? So the good thing about a three-quarter front is that it's forcing the offensive player to make a pass to their teammate where they're out of position. Right? Because every offensive player in the post wants to get their catch in this area here because it's closer to the basket and they can do a lot with it. If they catch it out in this area, now they have to waste their dribbles to try to get there. Okay, so your three-quarter front position, again, when you're here, is forcing that catch, making it difficult where you might deflect it. You might even be able to tap it and go steal the basketball. But all this is doing is making this hard for the offensive player to get a catch. You're here, you're denying, you've got your strong base, you've got contact, and you're denying this pass here, making it difficult, making life hard on both the passer and the post player. 
All right, so like I said, three-quarter front is probably one of the more popular and most used ways to defend the post, especially for us in college. This is how we played defense inside the post areas, in the three-quarter front position, denying and making life hard on that passer and the receiver of the pass inside the post. Okay, so make sure you got a strong base, you're denying with that hand out, your feet are wide, you've got contact there, and you're doing your job in order to make life hard for the post player inside with your three-quarter front. All right, Hoopers, well, the next thing we're gonna talk about is playing in a full front. Now, this is mostly used for when you're really trying to deny, maybe this player right here is a great offensive player, a great post player, they're dominant, and we wanna prevent them from catching the basketball. Or, let's just say it's me and Coach Adam. Coach Adam is 6'9", I'm 6'1". There's a little bit of an advantage for him, so I'm trying to get in front and not allow the, defense or the offensive player to throw it directly in. Right, so those are the couple scenarios that you may be put in the situation where you're fronting the offensive player. A height mismatch or the dominance of this player is so good that you want to deny them the basketball. So when you're in a full front, you don't want to, again, be standing straight up where the offensive player pushes you and pushes you and they throw the ball over your head, he catches and scores. We want to be able to sit low, put the pressure on him so if they do throw it, that he has to back up and now he gets the ball under the rim or this gives me enough time for my defenders to come over on my team to come over and make a play on the ball. Because what this offensive passer is not gonna be able to do is obviously throw it directly in. They're gonna have to throw it up and over my head and hopefully their player catches it before my defender gets over to help me and make a play on the basketball. So in this position here, we're in a full front. We wanna be big, show our hands, deny the pass in directly to this offensive player, force this team to throw the ball over the top of us as a defender and then by that time, we should have help coming over, right? So again, this is going to be in a situation where you have a height disadvantage or this player on offense is so good that your team does not want them to catch the basketball. So we're in a full front position, again, with a wide base, hands are up, we're in defense, we've got the strong base where the offensive player can't push us around, and we're making it hard on them again, and hard on the passer, because now they've got to throw it over the top and make a perfect pass in order for it to work. All right, so those are the three ways that you're most likely going to play defense inside the post. Behind, right, where you feel like you have the best advantage against that offensive player. Three-quarter front where you're making it hard and not really making that catch easy for the offensive player. And the full front where you're forcing the pass over the top and fully denying that post player inside the paint. All right, so those are your three ways, behind three-quarter and a full front when defending a post player. All right, Hoopers, well, that's it for today's video. Again, I've already given you three ways to play the post inside, right? Put yourself in the best position to be successful defensively. If you liked today's video, you learned a little bit, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let us know what you think. Also, subscribe to Think Pro Basketball. We're providing professional level training that's going to deliver in-game results and help you take your game to the next level. All types from scoring to defense to passing to playmaking right? Different types of breakdowns of moves, top crossover moves. We have it all at Think Pro Basketball. So make sure you head over to the channel and check it all out. And until I see you again next time in the next video that you watch from Think Pro Basketball, hit the gym, hit the court. Remember to always keep hooping.